A man on a date with a woman claims he is a superhero, with the power to tell a lady's hip size at a glance, which impresses his date. However, his daughter, Min, interrupts and reveals that he's no superhero, as his profession is a toilet designer. Despite this, women in the restaurant remain infatuated with him. She chastises his father that the reason her mother left is because he is an alcoholic womanizer, leading him to wallow in self-pity and declare his love for her, further fueling her frustration. Father and daughter then head back to their apartment, and the old man instantly changes his clothes, to the anger of Min. The man then turns around, and his weird neighbor, Yamada, compliments him for his getup, but the man gets so annoyed that he shuts the door. He then suddenly needs to take a dump and hurries to the bathroom, infuriating his daughter. She is so angry that she tells her old man that she wishes he would get sucked in by the toilet. The man thinks the idea is silly, but he instantly gets sucked in, as if it is a portal to another world. He appears in a large room in the sewers and is greeted by a large man with a high-pitched voice, telling him that he will become a protector of Earth for being the only man in the world taking a dump at this time. However, the man is not interested and ignores him, causing the high-pitched man to throw a wrench at him. He tells the man that his body is transforming into a superhero as he speaks, and as alien invaders will attack tomorrow, he must use his superpowers to protect Earth. The man rises from the toilet, now looking like a middle-aged, fat man. He is in such disbelief as he looks in the mirror that it takes him a pause until he finally screams and panics. Meanwhile, Min threatens to kick the door down. Luckily, as he opens the door, he finds that his daughter has fallen asleep. Meanwhile, a spaceship is heading to Earth. The cockroach monster, Emperor Black Hoy, tells his boss and prince that he is ready to wipe out humanity. The prince tells him that by tomorrow, humanity should be thrown into the depths of despair. Meanwhile, the hero puts his daughter to bed and struggles to think about what to tell her once she wakes up. He notices Min's teddy bear and becomes nostalgic, remembering when his daughter was still a child and no longer feels troubled. The girl slowly wakes up to find some stranger wanting to kiss her goodnight, and so she punches him in the face. Trying to confess his true identity, he inadvertently utters lewd words, angering his daughter who sends him flying out of the house. The man sits by the street in front of his apartment. As he wonders what to do, he falls asleep until it's already morning. He wakes up, hearing women screaming because they are being chased down by Emperor Black Hoy. The man hits him with his slippers. As it turns out, the emperor is just the size of a regular cockroach, and he flirts like he usually does. However, this time it doesn't work, and they leave. However, Black Hoy is still alive, and he invites the hero into their alien group. However, the hero just hits his slipper to the ground, over and over. The next monster, the mechanical shrimp monster, Iron Shrimp Man, appears. However, with one slap of hero's slipper and an insult, the monster already falls. Seeing as he already saved the world, he declares that he will become a superhero. However, his moment ends as Min kicks him in the annoyance of seeing him first thing in the morning. Meanwhile, the Prince of the Aliens is annoyed by his men, seeing as they are wrong in hearing that Earth doesn't have any superheroes. The Beast Monster, Beast King Uroborops, asks that he calm down since he is next to face the hero. Back on Earth, the hero needs a place to live, and so he knocks at an apartment front door. The door opens to reveal Yamada, who is glad to take him in. The hero is in Yamada's place, ashamed that he needs to trouble his neighbor. Yamada asks how many eggs he wants for breakfast, making the old man wonder why he is only wearing an apron in front of him. Yamada puts the eggs on the table, and they are revealed to be cartoonishly huge. As he tries to touch the eggs, a giant bird hatches, surprising him. Yamada wrestles it until it sleeps, saying he should have boiled the eggs more. Unable to take it anymore, the superhero goes to the bathroom. Meanwhile, Min is heading out, wondering why the neighbor is so loud early in the morning. As she walks, she wonders where her father is and takes out her phone. In Yamada's bathroom, the hero is sitting on the toilet, worried, not knowing what to do. His phone rings, and he is glad to see that his daughter is calling him. He wants to tell her he is his father, but the words that come out are creepy flirtations that make Min believe a pervert has her dad's phone. As she hangs up the phone, Beast King Uroborops happens to pass her by, making her wonder why there are so many weirdos lately. The Beast King rings an apartment and is surprised that a cute girl answers. He blushes and accidentally pierces his head with his invincible claw, and so he falls to the ground. On the alien ship, the leader is furious that they have been defeated yet again. 
One of his hooded soldiers volunteers to go next, and he disappears into teleportation. He reappears at the apartment. Unfortunately, he reappears at the wrong part, causing him to fall to a great height. However, since he is the chicken overlord, he has wings that he uses to fly back up. The aliens say his death magic is so powerful that he uses it to massacre planets. Meanwhile, the hero heads to his own bathroom to talk to the high-pitched man from before but without success. He then sits on the toilet in deep thought about what he needs to do. A schoolmate boy finds Min wearing her school uniform, and she explains her mistake of thinking it was a school day, which amuses him. On the other hand, Chicken Overlord has entered Yamada's apartment, thinking his target is there. He sees the giant egg, and he mistakes it for a brethren from his home planet. He is shocked that it turned into food, and thinks that humans are a vile species. He is then spotted by Yamada, who is excited to see another bird he can eat, and chases him. Chicken Overlord is so disturbed by this that he runs away. Getting out of the apartment, the chicken monster just so happened to come across the hero who wants to eat him for breakfast. The bird monster attacks with a supersonic voice, but the man is not affected by it. It has so little consequence that he gets more concerned as he sees his daughter down the street with some boy. He panics at the thought that he starts to remember the years when Min was still his innocent little girl. He starts to get so angry at the flirty boy that he insults Chicken Overlord, somehow defeating the bird. The aliens are becoming so worried that they ask their boss to give up on conquering Earth. However, the boss is no longer worried, seeing as he spotted the superhero's weakness. Down on Earth, the hero is still full of worry while looking at her daughter, enjoying her time with a boy. He promises that he will protect her no matter what. The alien investigation has found that sentient life on Earth is statistically split into men and women. They can be distinguished by the globes in their bodies, which contain their internal energy. Male globes are found in their lower half, while female globes, found on their chests, are comparatively large. Moreover, the bigger women's energy is, the more lethal they can be to men. Going on, the alien plays a clip of a woman with big globes, and all the other aliens begin to have massive nosebleeds. They realize that their army is entirely made up of males, and won't be a match for women. The prince, similarly bleeding from the nose, calls them pathetic. His troops then bring out a photo of Min, and they plan to kidnap her to shatter the hero's will to fight. Having studied the typical woman's preference, they've built the best weapon, Dream Guy V. At the police station, Min reports that her father has been missing for a week, but she's told to wait a bit longer. Although touched, her old man worries about her falling in love with a cop. As Yamada appears, the hero sees a boy, casually walking towards his daughter. He successfully scares the boy away with the flasher, but they're immediately caught by the police. While wondering what to do with her father, Min sees a tacky-looking man and thinks that her old man has finally returned. Seeing that Dream Guy doesn't even have a human face, she kicks him away and tells him to never return. To support their creation, the aliens send a mecha luxury car, but their way is suddenly blocked by the hero. Furious that they're attempting to defile his daughter with money, he tells them to do it to him instead. They finally reveal their alien identity, and the car transforms into a mecha robot. Annoyed by the hero mocking its disappointing visuals, the car lets out a series of attacks, but its short limbs fail to even reach the target. The old man smacks the enemy around and destroys the entire engine. The car falls, and he drags the dream guy out, scolding him for harassing him and his daughter. Meanwhile, Min sadly returns to an empty home and thinks about how her father always returned soon after his abrupt trips. Her tears fall, saying he should have told her how long he'd take. On the other side of the door, the old man hears her crying, but his situation won't let him comfort her as much as he wants. The next day, Min gets up, still sad from last night. To her delight, she sees breakfast prepared on the table, with a note telling her to eat while it's hot. While it might not be exactly what she wanted, she tears up at the thought of her father still being by her side. The hero is outside, glad to have done what he could. Just then, the alien prince appears, thrusting his hand through the man's chest and saying he was forced to do things himself. As the alien is going on about how surprisingly weak he is, the human picks his nose nonchalantly, his chest already recovered. Incredulous, he argues that it should be impossible and continuously drives both hands deep into his chest. However, he falls to the ground feeling cheated as the hero instantly heals through all the attacks, still picking his nose unbothered. He's Prince, the most powerful empire in the universe, 
but a ball of snot was given more importance than he was. Misunderstanding why the hero was so occupied with it, he picks the booger up and says that the substance must be his natural enemy. Consuming it would make him capable of deciphering its structure and traits in a flash. The alien eats the booger with no hesitation and confidently flies to the sky. Now that he's absorbed his enemy's weakness, he's set to begin their conquest of the planet. As the hero finds him ridiculous, Prince gathers snot from him and the other humans in the world. Collecting the substance from everyone and everywhere, he gathers it all into a huge ball, believing that nothing will be able to stop him now. The hero worriedly looks on, knowing that the city will be disgusting if his opponent drops a booger so big in the area. To his surprise, the disgusting mass drops on himself, and he's accidentally buried in his own weapon. The old man turns away, but the ball slowly rises again, as Prince isn't willing to give up so easily. Before launching his attack, the prince asks to know the name of his enemy. He tells him he is Min's daddy, so he misunderstands that it's simply daddy. As the hero is about to smack the booger away, his sandal instead touches Min. Realizing what's happened, the father tries to downplay the situation, pausing his battle for now. His daughter mounts him and unleashes a barrage of punches on his face, annoyed that he's making trouble, while she's sad over her father. The sight of her beating him up ignites something in Prince, as he remembers how he accepted his mother's beatings with love. Understanding that he's fallen in love, the prince dispels the mass of snot in his hands and offers his hand in marriage to the young girl. She stops strangling her father and returns to her room without a word. Thinking that it was foolish to confess empty-handed, the prince tells his men to look for the best gift and decides to buy all the apartments in their building. However, they're shocked to see the price of a single unit, as their funds would only allow them a meager 4.5 to Tommy mat room. Unwilling to give up on his love, he recklessly decides to sell their spaceship for cheap, abandoning their only way to return home, despite his men's desperate cries. At home, the wounds from Min's punches won't heal. As the two roommates are arguing, someone rings the doorbell. It's Prince, who surprisingly hands Yamada a year's worth of rent for the room next to the heroes. It's an important night, as the winner of the Golden Toilet Seat Award will be walking away with both prestige and enough money to set up their business. The hero is announced as the winner, so he goes up the stage and thanks everyone, thinking about his hard work, sacrifices, and risks taken. With everyone's support, he was able to revolutionize the smart toilet seat. However, the success got to his head, and he made several foolish decisions. In the middle of his infidelity, his wife called, asking for a divorce. Upon hearing these words, he woke up from his dream and was back in his hero body. He sees Prince trying to strangle him and complaining that he didn't even die once throughout the night. The hero smacks him across the room and questions if Yamada really plans on making them live together. As he's complaining about the alien's eligibility, the prince gets an idea and offers the skilled man a position as his right hand. His fluency in Japanese is doubted, so he explains that he's learned the language to charm the girl in the other apartment. Realizing that he's talking about his daughter, the old man vehemently warns him against the idea. His anger is misunderstood, and they think that he must like the girl as well. As Yamada tries to calm them down, someone rings the doorbell. It's Min, who's come wrapped in a towel and asking for help as the tap for their bathtub broke again. The two men scurry to help her, but are taken down with a punch to their faces. Instead of convincing her that they aren't stalkers, Inappropriate comments are the only thing that come out of their mouths. Her neighbor says they're distant relatives of his, and they fight over her, having a tasteless argument as usual. While it isn't ideal, she asks if either of them can repair plumbing. In her bathroom, they see an endless flow of water from the tap. Prince takes the initiative, puts the pipe in his mouth, and drinks the water coming out. Seeing this, the hero realizes that the pipe is connected to the main waterway, and eventually to the ocean. If he plans on drinking up the world's resources, then he must be stopped. His thoughts are wasted. As the alien drowns from drinking too much, Min runs to ask for help. Meanwhile, her father quickly gets to work, asking the prince for assistance. Sharing that he used to live there, he recalls how his wife often called him to fix the tap and how he always shunned the request away. When his wife divorced him, the nagging was passed on to their daughter. Prince finally realizes that the man is her father, so he confesses his love again, earning him a smack in the face. Min returns to an empty bathroom and sees a fixed tap. 
Seeing the shoddy repair, she feels her old man's presence. The great emperor is enraged to realize that their ship was sold to fund a stay on Earth. Appeasing him, a younger alien offers to take care of his older brother. In the apartment, an unfamiliar alien appears before them. She asks Prince if his people are still set on invading. Hearing his plain reply, she says he's forgotten what his fiance looks like, which angers the two other men. As they realize that he's engaged, their anger grows stronger as she talks about something he did to her. Just then, Min exits the apartment, and the alien immediately attacks her. The prince puts himself between them in sacrifice, spouting more confessions of his love. However, the sharp tail didn't even reach him, as the hero gripped it hard, his hand bleeding. He scolds the girl, but her body is completely dazed. To their surprise, a face appears at the tip of the tail, angrily demanding to be unhanded. She reveals herself as the real body. Back when he was still in school, Prince entered the girl's bathroom due to an emergency. He heard a cry for help and cautiously opened a stall where he found a girl with her head in the toilet. As he worried about the humanoid body, a tail spoke and explained that she's a dataling. They're a tentacle race that attaches itself to human adapters, using them for a variety of purposes, with excretion being the most important. Moving on to her problem, she explains that she ran out of toilet paper. The boy wiped her human body's mouth, and from that day, she considered herself her fiancé, chasing him around incessantly. Due to their differences, he was against being together, more so with marriage on the line. However, his father reasons and pushes the idea as dataling are ideal partners. With that, the prince walked away, wanting to search for a planet with a suitable wife. As they talk about it casually, Min finds the entire story childish and finds herself foolish for feeling her father in their presence. Yamada suddenly bursts out of the room, running to Data Ling's unconscious body, on the premise of providing medical assistance. He gives her CPR, not knowing what he's putting his mouth on. Meanwhile, Prince's brother is flying across galaxies. In the apartment, Yamada and the Data Ling are carried in, with the alien's main tentacle accidentally latched behind the closed door. The hero and Prince talk about their plans and promise to protect Min, whatever happens. As they moved in to shake hands, the alien was detached from her body, and a burst of energy began to shoot out of her bottom. The two panic, and the prince says they have to get it under control, unless they want it to explode. With no other choice, he attaches his mouth to the hole, planning to analyze the substance in the same way he previously did with the booger. In the middle of it all, the younger brother appears and sees the disgraceful sight. The youngest brother quickly confiscated the body, mistakenly identifying it as the woman his brother fell in love with. As he's flying away, the battery explodes, taking the prince out. Just then, someone knocks on Min's door. It's a man with the hero's old appearance. A man who has the hero's past appearance appears. The hero questions who he really is. He thinks about his memories with his daughter and decides that he shouldn't doubt himself. Min opens the door and greets the man in the same way she does when he disappears. Her real father hears all this from the other apartment and shows Prince old photos of himself explaining how the man has stolen his face. The alien cheers him up and says there's someone who can answer his questions. He points to the unconscious dataling on the ground, who's known to have the most information in the universe. Although she's unconscious, she should be fine if they connect her to a battery. Neither of them want to plug it up themselves, so they choose Yamada instead. With devious expressions, they put the cord in, and the light of knowledge radiates throughout the room. For some reason, their flatmate looks a lot different, with the dataling taking complete control over the body. Prince's nose bleeds as he notices that the man's globes have risen to his chest. The hero scolds her for changing their friend's gender, so she argues that they're the ones who plugged her in haphazardly. Since she needed to match with a female port, she was forced to transform him accordingly. However, the argument quickly ends as he threatens to cut her off. Moving on, he asks to know about his body and is directed to place his DNA in the host's mouth. Misunderstanding, he goes in to kiss Yamada, but Prince plucks out a strand of hair, questioning his motives. The analysis proceeds, and the dataling explains that he's not an inhabitant of this world. Expounding, she says that there are many universes, and each parallel one has its own Earth. A certain power led him to a dimensional rift, but he got lost and ended up in a dimension different from his. Since parallel worlds have the same people but slightly different timelines, the management bureau had to modify his appearance. Annoyed, 
he demands that he be sent back to the right place. The only way is by meeting the exact same condition as before, which was being the only person in the world to take a dump at the moment. He drags Prince into the bathroom and forces him to ingest and analyze the required substance to control everyone's bowel movement. Meanwhile, the third prince's corpse is brought to the emperor, making him question why his second child would go to such lengths. That said, he does not mind, as he never settled on the youngest as his successor anyway. Back then, when the youngest son left immediately, the eldest insisted on taking planned and refined actions after learning all about his target. Following his plan, it's revealed that he's actually the one who has stolen the hero's identity as Min's father. In their apartment, the first prince, who learned all about humans through TV shows, finds them amusing. Min tells him to cut a watermelon open, and he obliges by creating a beautiful detox juice and sculpture from the fruit. She complains about him getting the table drenched, but he quiets her by stuffing a piece in her mouth. Just like that, all her complaints vanish upon tasting the sweet and refreshing juice. Her fantasies are filled with watermelons, all of which offer her invigorating scenarios. The fake father appeases the daughter in a flash, and the other aliens are amazed at how the prince conquered the woman immediately. On the other hand, his father is unimpressed and turns the screen off because he doesn't want to see the farce. In the apartment, everything is set for the operation to transport the hero back to his world. Meanwhile, Min returns to a completely different apartment, looking far more lavish than before. She excitedly looks around and complains as she's told that he threw out an old box that was hidden under her bed. There, a memory box full of photo books and old toys was hidden. The girl went out to retrieve it, but saw the invasive group of neighbors rifling through her stuff and holding her undergarments. She kicks them away, but her fake father invites them inside for a meal, saying they are esteemed guests. A feast is laid out in front of everyone, and the hero can't believe that he's become a guest in his own home. He thinks about the last time he ate with his daughter, back when she was still a child, and complains to her mother about his nagging. Things were quite awkward between them before, but having a meal together wasn't so bad. Yamada and Min fight over the meat, and Mo simply looks at them with pitying eyes. He thinks about how easy earthlings are to manipulate, and laughs at his brother, who let himself be tainted by an inferior culture. While the hero feels jealous over how much the fake father can provide, Prince is hurt by how the newcomer doesn't even bat an eye at him, thinking that his short temper must be due to struggling bowels. The second prince tries to help clear the substance out. To his surprise, it doesn't work, and he's kicked away. The hero calls him over to the bathroom, asking him to proceed with their plan right away, as it's breaking his heart to see his daughter with a capable father. He insists on going through it, shouting loud enough for those outside to hear and misunderstand. However, the alien admits that he's lost confidence. After a bunch of silly ideas, they finally reach the possibility of the man not being from Earth. They suspect him, but try to confirm their suspicions first. Min, hearing them from outside, loses her appetite and leaves. This gives Mo a chance to swap their drinks with the water of despair, which will make them lose all hope in life and open his path to victory. However, he mistakenly takes a sip while being overjoyed. The young girl goes to her room and looks through her old memory box. She gets sentimental after looking through an album and thinking about how her unreliable father brings her comfort. Meanwhile, the hero is looking sunken in the bathroom as they've exhausted all possibilities. With this, they conclude that the fake father is an alien. They run out to stop the intruder, but see him trying to take his own life. The hero tries to stop, knowing how sad his daughter will be if she loses him. Mo begs for alcohol, so the human drinks the bottle to spite him. Drinking the water of despair, he falls into a similar state. Prince follows soon after, then Yamada. In no time, they're all wailing on the ground. Unable to ignore them any longer, Min walks to the dining room. There she sees her real father, who wraps a piece of meat in vegetables, just like he did when she was a child. She begins to tear up, not understanding why she can see her father in the strange neighbor. Moreover, the image of them all is drawn on one of the books in her memory box. As she's trying to make sense of things, their entire roof bursts open as the great emperor crashes into their apartment. Min remembers the day her mother left and repeatedly hitting her father, blaming him for what happened. She grew up having to defend herself, and now the emperor of the universe has come crashing into her home. Despite his imposing presence, her instincts kick in, and she tries to fight the alien. 
However, she's easily thrown around, and the others finally begin to wake up from their despair. Prince runs to the girl, desperately telling her to hang on. Looking at him, she remembers her father, and how he carried her around when she was sick from an allergic reaction. Her mother called, and he tried his best to ignore it, but he immediately left his work gathering upon realizing how bad the situation was. Looking for a way to rush to the hospital, they fought about how she fed the child, something they knew she was allergic to. Min regains consciousness, although angry, as the second prince has been trying to wake her up by slapping her hard. He scans the room, looking for the person who hurt her, and is shocked to find his father towering over them. He tells his useless sons to return to him. The first prince begs for another chance, insisting that his perfect plan is about to bear fruit, as his disguise so far has been perfect. They frankly told him how obvious his identity was. The eldest argues that his power is flawless, even recalling how their father often asked him to come into his room all night, wearing the faces of different women. Everyone is bothered by what they just heard, and the loose-lipped son is smacked across the room, punished for revealing a secret. Moving on, he orders the second-born to come home, as he must inherit the throne and conquer the entire universe. He looks at the young girl, who recalls the familiar scene of being abandoned for some other responsibility. To her surprise, Prince rejects the selfish idea and says he'd rather stay with her, as she was the person who let him feel warmth and love. His father laughs, proud of his bravery, and tells him to handle things himself. With this, the Emperor attacks his son, wanting him to defend his loved ones. The young alien immediately collapses for the powerful blows, and so does the entire building. Min tries to save her neighbor, but the Daedaling barely saves her from the falling rubble, enveloping the girl in her elastic body. As the aliens are set to return to their ship, the hero finally regains consciousness, furious that he's lost his home. He takes his slipper off and casually guesses the Emperor's backstory. Annoyed with the alien's face, they begin the fight, and the hero smacks him across the face. An awkward silence passes, as nothing happens from the attack. Still not knowing what his power is, the man turns back with a confused face. The hero still doesn't know what his power is, but he confidently faces the Emperor's punch, thinking that it won't hurt him either. His confidence is broken, as the fist sends him flying across the street, breaking through his invulnerability. Min runs to the man. Yamada tries to follow, but he's held back by the Daedaling. She says that the Emperor is the strongest being in the universe, and that he'd just tear them apart. He says he doesn't mind, as he's already died once. The hero wakes up and regains hope of escaping to his old world, but it's quickly crushed as the Emperor arrives. He charges at the human, humiliated that he isn't being underestimated. As he's about to take him out, water sputters from the toilet that the first prince was sitting on. Annoyed, his father blasts it away, along with his leg. Mo falls and screams in pain, begging for his survival and promising to do anything he wants. However, the ruthless emperor vaporizes him without hesitation. Proving his strength, the great alien demands the hero to fight properly, but the man thinks about how he didn't even do anything to defeat his old enemies. While he's questioning his identity as a hero, Min appears and shouts that he's the hero of this world. Seeing her, the conqueror aims his palm, ready to vaporize her, but the attack misses by an inch as the Daedaling messes with his aim. Wrapping around his wrist, they drag and flail him around, throwing him down from the sky. The two are locked in battle, and something supports Yamada from the back. It's Prince, launching a barrage of excretion at his father. While the gesture is valiant, the method is far from graceful. Nonetheless, he continues the assault, and his father easily makes his way to him, sending him flying with a single kick. Yamada attacks again, but he's caught and about to be taken out. Successfully forcing the ball to pop open, the Emperor smashes them to the ground and questions why a Daedaling would be so brave. She says she's from the smartest race in the universe, but that humans are the only things she can't understand. Among her host's memories are completely illogical beliefs and choices, but they are also filled with invigorating warmth. Disgusted, the Emperor crushes her body and quickly follows up with Yamada, who ran to him in anger. He raises his hand and blasts Yamada. In his end moment, Yamada remember his mom and dad. As he vanish away into nothingness, the hero falls to his knees, begging him to stop at the expense of his own life. Relishing in the pitiful moment, the alien tells him to call himself a loser and ask for death three times, despite his daughter's cries for him to stop. 
She yells that he's their only hope, and that he wrote it all in the book. Annoyed by her voice, the Emperor aims his palm at her. They try to stop him, but all the hero sees is her subtle smile and desperate tears before her body is vaporized. The drawing pad she held, containing sketches of his victories over the aliens, fell to the ground. He picks up the drawing book she was holding so tightly and is surprised to see the content as he flips through the pages. Prince goes berserk, throwing everything and anything he could find at his father. Prince distracts his father as the hero is reminded of the time he brought his daughter to the hospital. Despite calls from his work, he chose to stay with his precious girl. One day, he drew a picture book for her. Planning to make a superhero story, he based it off their own experiences, such as smacking the cockroach, making the shrimp she's allergic to go away, and chasing away a scary character from a movie. Everything she disliked, he beat them all up in the picture book. Prince has reached his limit, and the Emperor moves on to defeat the hero. However, he says he can't die just yet, as he still hasn't solved the biggest problem. The main villain that Min drew is her father himself. Remembering how some of his actions hurt her, including getting a two-seater sports car despite their debts, she drew an evil daddy, hoping that her good daddy would get rid of him. With this, he finally realized that the Emperor is the terrible part of himself. With this, the two finally fight toe-to-toe, -to -toe, flying across the city and locked in an intense duel. There was a time when the old man was rushed to the hospital, barely surviving a serious stroke. Yamada soothed the worried daughter and explained that he worked too hard, pushing through eight different jobs at once. She's unable to understand, as she always thought that he was the president of a company. The girl is shocked to find out that the day he brought her to the hospital was also the day when a big project was stolen from his hands. He was framed as a bad person and lost all his money as he was chased out of the industry. The desperate man worked desperately, often going to places no one would dare to, and he only worked harder when his wife left. Looking at him, Yamada felt like his own problems were trivial and often encouraged his neighbor to explain the situation to his daughter. However, he couldn't allow the hero in Min's heart to lose so easily. Such is his pride as a father. In his past life, he remembers a boy, looking just like Prince, introducing himself as his daughter's partner. During his coma, the doctors told the young girl to keep talking to him, so she read her stories about superheroes, just like he did when she was sick. She cries upon reaching the end of the story, saying she doesn't need an invincible hero, and that she just needs him by her side, doing everything until they grow old. As she weeps and begs him to wake up, the man clashes against the Emperor one last time. A new morning comes, and Min gets out of bed and sees her father's empty bed as usual. Just then, a loud voice screams, saying they've run out of toilet paper. Annoyed, she reluctantly throws a roll of toilet paper into the bathroom, reminding her father that he isn't supposed to push so hard. He comes out, looking like his bigger version from the different world, and says he left to buy her bread in the morning. The two squabble and have a less than peaceful morning, just like a normal family.